Um, I'll probably just put it into YouTube and uh, you guys can, can come back to check it out. All right, so let me share my screen very quick. All right, so let's get started. If any questions you have, uh, feel free to uh, just to chat or you know type in the in the chat window. I'll be watching that. All right. So a little bit more introduction about the topic. We really not, nothing really technical today. Um, just more of the co course overview. Some of the you know uh, the things you need to know. How we're gonna do the assignment and projects things like that. Okay, very typical like the first day of the class. Um, so we actually got this course number just recently. Okay, I think half year ago, but previously it was like uh, one of this uh, forty nine ninety uh, course, the upper division special topics course, and then we offered this course for such a long time so that we eventually got a formal title and name for this more web engine development. And believe it or not, I was the one that proposed this course. About six years ago, I started this topic. So this is really like a, something I grew on here in Cal Poly. Um, before I came, there wasn't anything about mobile development. So I'm very proud of that. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a, this is my seventh year uh, here at Cal Poly. I joined in fall 2014. I started teaching mostly software engineering. And um, of course, I like to do a lot of other development. And uh, in the past years, uh, work on a lot of the mobile application and cloud application. So very, this is kind of my passion. So uh, that's why I keep kind of changing the top, adding more and cool stuff. So, so you, you, I'll guarantee you guys get the most up-to-date uh, technologies. All right. So I'll talk more about those one later on. And speaking of a mobile application, you know, we're at 2021, okay? So I'm not gonna say this is like a very trending technology. And compared with 10 years ago, uh, when everybody was crazy about iPhone, the new releases, now we get kind of a little bit calmed down and you're not gonna be very super excited about the new iPhone or some other new phone. So people get used to it and it's also already part of the life. Okay, so, um, but you know, I also want to, re to remind you some of the things happened in the past 10 years because this past 10 years was definitely a very special period of time for mobile computing, okay? And then, you know, it's, it's interesting that, you know, we started to talk about this topic to students every year. And obviously for me, I started seeing the student from a younger and a younger generation so it might be interesting to see how much you know about this thing. Um, you know, back in 2015, when we started the course, I didn't have much, you know, communication gap with, with the students. But now I, I feel that when I talk to you guys, maybe there's something that you probably never heard about or some of the things you probably totally forgot, okay? Um, I'm pretty sure you guys were all born at this year, but I don't know how much you know. Does, does anyone actually remember anything about this, this whole iPhone? The very first iPhone. For example, you play your, your parents' iPhone, you see something else, yeah? Patrick, how, how, how old were you in 2007? Seven? Wow, you guys are really young, okay. That's the year I came to the US uh, for the grad school. Okay, so, okay. Well, yeah, it's really interesting that, you know, think about that, and at that time you probably seen that from from the parents and, but you, but then, you know, you won't have that kind of a special feeling on, oh, wow, this is, was a very big, you know, breakthrough and that fundamentally changed everything. Um, for me, it was pretty huge. Uh, never seen those things before. Mobile device exists for a long time, but that kind of iPhone, you know, obviously the experience, everything is so special. I remember at that time when I was in grad school, the guys who have the initial iPhone, iPad, like they really want to, sh most of the people are playing like two things. One is the Angry Bird. The other one is um, their little sheep game. I forgot the name. Um, I don't, I'm not saying that the game itself is anything special. It's just because, you know, with the touchpad, everything, that kind of experience, we never seen that before. 
So um, anyway, so some of the story, it came in 2007 that actually started the whole mobile computing. My personal experience with the development was actually pretty early, but you know, the experience was very interesting. So that kind of shows you the whole like a big trend and popularity of a mobile computing didn't start until 2010 and 2011. So I told you like in 2019, 2009, I was doing grad school, I was doing my PhD. And then one day, one of the students in the lab actually told me there is this competition called Imagine Cup. I don't know how many of you actually participate in this one. This is a very good competition from Microsoft. And then they do that every year. So you just submit a project. And the only requirements about this requ project is that you need to use a Microsoft technology. That's how they can promote their, their technologies. So somehow the other student decided, you know, why, why don't we do this mobile application we call a PDA doctor. Basically, it's uh, you know uh, a mobile application. You can input your symptoms, and then we can help you to diagnose what kind of disease you have and how do you what kind of uh, things you should do to to help yourself. And uh, that was a project. You know, it's a very boring idea to be honest. But we got into the final of the uh, of the competition, and then we were actually invited to Boston, and that was a great trip. I mean, that we didn't win the competition because I, I did not expect anything from that. I was surprised that we even got selected to the final. But, you know, at that time, the interesting is that we were required to use Microsoft technology. So we actually use this um, system called Windows CE. Has anyone, are, are anyone familiar with Windows CE? It's the Windows for embedded software development. And then, um, uh, so he, uh, uh, okay, sorry, no, Patrick, I was looking at a question. I don't know that that professor. Yeah, the, yeah, wireless is more on the computer engineering side, I think, uh, not too much on the software side. And, uh, but you know, by that time, what I was trying to say was that that was already 2009. We didn't even thought about iOS development. We didn't thought about Android development at that time. And, and we were you know, just found out this, you know, Windows CE that you can develop a mobile application. The reason it's called a PDA, I think it's called a portable, maybe digital application. I forgot what, what, that that's something like, uh, you know, um, uh, Windows, like a mobile application. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that back to 2009, even at the CS major, I, I wasn't aware of this whole trend. Otherwise we probably would do a lot of things with mobile application, even though the iPhone there, it was there. Uh, but I personally got involved with the development. So we, we did this mobile development back in 2009. I was pretty early. I wish I actually worked on some of the apps. If I did that app at that time, probably I got something, you know, big, hopefully, at least a better chance. Okay, these days, if you want to make an app and then make it cure, that's very, very difficult, almost impossible. Okay, uh, but you know, later on, I, I had a lot more interactions uh, and experiences with mobile. And so we, I personally started Android development in the end of 2009, in the same year, because after that competition, we, we got very excited about this competition. And then we look at another competition, which is called Android Developer Challenge. So Google announced this challenge in the mid, mid of 2009. And uh, in order to compete with Apple, because Apple uh, started the mobile ahead of Google and Google catched up and then they have the Android OS. So that was the one of the early Android operating system was very, very slow. It kind of sucks compared with the iPhone. And, but then in order to attract more developer to do Android app, they got this a huge uh, competition that they put a lot of money, like uh, the, the top price was hundreds, you know, K. Uh, if you go to some of the categories, so we were actually doing some kind of a trip planner app at that time. So that was my first you know, experience with mobile development. But even then, I don't, I don't think the mobile will be you know, important um, or it will be the big trend. At least I, I didn't find myself too interested on the, those developments. Um, but just kind of showed you um, at that time, a lot of people didn't realize the trend were coming. Um, I think the major thing that, that make it huge, I think it was around 2010, 2011, when the iPhone 4 or iPhone 4S came. And that really, that's when everybody started kind of getting the iPhones. And probably at that time, you know, all the families, your parents at that kind of started to replace your phone, regular phone with smartphones. 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of the event if you remember that a little bit more because th at that generation, the whole design of the phone, the app and everything was much more mature than the first generation iPhone. And also at that time, I think it's more open. In the first generations, it was only AT&T can do the iPhone. And you, you can't do that with other carrier. And later on, I think it's getting more open. So that's kind of what happened in the early days. So in 2011, I graduated from grad school and my first job was in Amazon. And then, uh, the, you know, when you get to the offer from Amazon, you can, um, this, my story was that I did an internship in Amazon before. So that's why I got the return offer. I was supposed to go back to the team. So I was working in the AWS team, one of the team called Route 53. Uh, for those of you who use AWS, you probably know that it is a service that helps you to set up the DNS records for the domain name IP address translation. So I was in that team, but to be honest, I wasn't very interested in that team because it, it is not a very important service, you know, doing the DNS resolution to translate the, the, the domain name to, to IP. It doesn't sound like a very interesting service to do, even though it is a very important service for the web applications. So I, I was thinking, you know, what, what kind of a team I can go? And Amazon is huge. They got a retail, they got a, you know, cloud computing, they got a lot of other things. So in that year, uh, Amazon, release and announce their first um, Kindle Fire tablet. This is the device, this one right here. Um, again, I guess you guys probably don't remember this at all. So it was kind of a big deal because at that time there wasn't that many um, you know, manufacturers for the tablet. Uh, the iPad was the most important. And then the Google has the Nexus, that's also pretty cool. And other than that, Samsung has some of those, but Amazon jumped into the market because they have the content, they have a book, they have music, they have videos. So that's how they decided to go for that. And then during that product release, Jeff Bezos was showing all the product. And one of the important products they showed was something called Amazon Silk. So they actually use a lot of the cloud computing to rebuild the browser, the web browser for the tablet. So that's really fast and had a lot of other cool features. So I was, you know, saw, seeing that news and then the, uh, the, the press conference. And I was so impressed because this one, this application was a very good example on how you combine cloud computing and mobile computing because the front end is the mobile computing, the back end they use a lot of cloud computing to support the, the, the browser to, for example, load the resources in a faster way. Um, so at that time, you know, in 2011, it was all about cloud and mobile. Everyone was excited about that. And I was just asking the recruiter, recruiter, could you actually put me to this Amazon Silk team? And I was very lucky because at that time the, the team was very popular and then they are hiring a lot. So very quickly they, you know, put me to the, to the team. I was very glad. Uh, the only downside was that the previous team who gave me the offer actually was really mad about that. Um, and then also the worst part is that somehow the, the Silk team was in the same floor as my previous team. And that's why I have to see the other people. And that, that, that wasn't, you know, uh, easy, but, uh, but it's okay. You know, you're just the intern. They, they don't really take it too seriously. Uh, they got a lot of talents there, uh, but that was uh, my real kind of professional development experience with mobile development and, and cloud computing. So that's why I later on started to work on more of those. So I have to say that this team actually could pretty much change and impact uh, my career a lot. Because in the grad school, I was mainly doing the research in software engineering. I didn't do anything about the mobile work computer. I don't even know those. Okay. Uh, but since the work later on, most of my work research, some of the other projects, even right now, I do a lot of education. A lot of things I still, you know, take advantage of this kind of experience. That's why I told a lot of you when you are trying to decide where to work. Okay. Normally, of course, you want to look at a company. Right, that's very important. If you're talking about Google, Facebook, the other one is a smaller company locally. I think you should go for Google or Facebook. But sometimes the company might not um, differ a lot. So if you see Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, yeah, you might be saying that Facebook might be paying a little bit higher. Yeah, that's true. But um, the difference isn't that big. So at that time, you really want to look at your team because the team determines um, your kind of skill set, your experiences. 
if you're getting to a very trending and popular team, that normally kind of influence you in many ways, and that's going to help you a lot in the coming years. Okay, let's say you are joining some of the very popular AI, Google AI team, and then a couple of years later, you might be easily jump into some other companies. Okay, I give you another example. One of my friends was working in Google Map team. Now he, he was older than me, he joined Google earlier. And then if you can remember uh, Apple, the iPhone, they dropped Google Map at the default map app. At some point, I forgot, forgot which year. Uh, if you guys remember something new at that time, I think it was around 2013 or 14. They started replace the default map app with Apple Map by, by themselves. Um, but in the beginning, there were a lot of bugs and issues with the Apple app. It wasn't accurate. They navigated to the wrong place and then they even got some accident. So they were in a very tough decision. At that time, the Apple Map team expanded a lot. They just hired a lot of people from Google Map. So the friend actually went from Google to Apple, he got a huge raise in the in a package. Okay, so so I just want to let you know that in many cases, the team, the technology, is more important than the company brand itself. If the company brand doesn't differ a lot, we often see students got offers from Google, but it turned out that they put them into some team. For example, this one is about the. Um, make like an internal financial team, you're basically writing tools and software for Google's financial team. So that doesn't sound like a very exciting position, even though you work for Google, but you're not doing anything related with this Google Map, Google uh, Gmail or all of those. So it just basically you're like a, a helper for, for some of the financial people. So that's, that's definitely not a high priority to consider. Okay, so the team really important, okay? Now keep talking and uh, after working in Amazon for about one year, um, I got invited to work on this startup company. Uh, it's called PowerWorks. So, so we were working on a mobile augmented reality. And you can see the reason I can you know, change from there to this one, just because this is also about mobile. I was very familiar with the mobile. I was very familiar with the cloud computing. This one used a lot of cloud computing resources. So the one of my professors actually contacted me to join his startup. He got some fundings and I immediately decided to go because this is actually a very cool uh, project. We do this object recognition. Now, remember this one happened in 2013. Now, these days you do an object recognition is not really too difficult, but we were working on this one back in 2013. I was really, really early and uh, it was a little bit too early. So that's why this startup actually didn't uh, work out, um, but it was a very good experience. And um, this is the first I, I personally published or I actually led a small team together with publish it on back in 2013 in the Google Play. And uh, we got a pretty good reviews as you can see guys, you know, full five-star reviews. You know, I always do the five-star reviews and the app was very, uh, you know, um, uh, cool, but unfortunately, I can't. I think I don't think it's still there in the store. Uh, but of course, we don't have the back end support. This app, you can actually uh, open the camera and then um, take a picture. It will recognize the object and then show you some of the content. Okay, so it was a pretty cool, you know, app to have. Uh, that was a, a very professional development and publishing process. So later on, I started working on more and more projects. And this is a more of a research project we did for the Vanderbilt Medical School. So we're building this app to help the diabetes patient track their activities to give recommendations. It's a pretty standard app you can think about, but it was a very early kind of a example of how mobile computing can be used to support other industries and domains, okay? As you can see, we got you know five star reviews. As you can see here, um, you know perfect scores. And then we did. Uh, this is another one I mentioned earlier this morning. And we had another startup company on indoor navigation. So we realized the problem of you know going to the indoor environment sometimes is like convention centers, hospitals, uh, hotels, and then you it's very hard to find the ways and the destinations. The GPS doesn't work very well in the indoor environment. So that's why we use our technology, uh, primarily Bluetooth and machine learning to try to predict where you are so that we can show you the route. So as the app, we actually, we have a branded app for the National Music City Center. 
Uh, we actually have a lot of other apps for different hospitals and uh, you know convention centers. So that was a much more successful startup than the first one. Um, as you can see, again, we got a pretty good reviews. Okay. Uh, well, I didn't cut the number, but you know, as you can see, it's a perfect review. Okay. All right. So this is the one I also mentioned earlier this morning. Uh, this is a like an IoT type of application. We we made this smart device that allows you to test the stress level uh, of your own. So in the day days, you guys are pretty, you know, uh, under a lot of pressure. Sometimes you want to see uh, whether it's healthy or not, how much pressure uh, stress you have. So we can take a little bit of your saliva and then we can analyze it and then give you some kind of a value to show you the actual real level of your stress. Okay, so this one connects to the app. So we build an Android version of that first and then publish it was, as you can see, this is a project back in 2016. Everything looks better than the first years because at that time, you know, a lot more better designs and everything. So uh, that's what we did at that time. So this one I also mentioned uh, earlier this morning, we were also involved uh, in the uh, startup to build the uh, tools to help the marketing and salespeople to do their job. Okay, so this is actually their own email client. So this is the probably the most complicated mobile application ever done. So we actually built a email client, basically a Gmail app. You can think about that way. And then difference that we can connect to different app, emails. You can connect that with a Gmail, or office and then it support all the email compose feature load email feature you know send reply forward all of those it was a very complicated app and and um yeah very hard to manage so a uh, lot of details to to think about but you know very good experience with that um so anyway, so those, those are the, some of the experience I had. And later on, I just had tons of other projects related with students. Uh, I can keep talking about this for the whole day. Okay, so I, you know, again, I, I personally very interested in mobile development. Um, the, the nice thing about you, mobile development compared with others, I don't know if you guys realize or not, this is a, a easier type of development compared with, for example, web development or some other development like game development. So because the mobile app is very um, well-defined, you're always going to program this little screen with that kind of a dimension, with kind of the very expected feature and the pattern. So these days, if you have a nav idea, pretty much you can imagine what are the features, how the screen should look like. So the mobile development isn't too difficult. So it's very easy to get into this field, to build something very quickly. That's also why I think the mobile development has a lot of potential to make startup. That's why early days, a lot of this huge startup starts just with a simple app. Okay, so that's the nice part about this app. It doesn't have very high bar. If you got a good idea, if you execute as well, uh, you will also have a lot of good opportunities. Okay. Um, speaking of a mobile development, these are some of the very old data, but I still want to show you this one. This is the things I talked in 2015. And at that time, you know, the world's population, 80% of them have a smartphone, mobile phone, and, and all of this is a huge number. No, I just want to show this one. This is a number back in, you know, six, seven years ago. Now I'm, I'm sure this is really nothing new. Uh, some of the very interesting number back then was that in 2014, this is the year that the mobile users actually take over the, the, the traditional desktop users. Okay, that was a huge, guys, because at that time, a lot of companies still do not want to admit the facts that they can't imagine, you know, yeah, mobile is nice, it's cool, but you can only do certain things on mobile. You cannot do all the things, the traditional things, just like normal we do in the desktop. Especially they're talking about a lot of things are, you know, has a complicated UI, everything, you're never going to do that on, on desktop uh, mobile. But nowadays, nobody's going to talk about it anymore. Everything can be moved to mobile. Everything can be simplified and then redesigned to fit to mobile. And that's basically already happened. So, but 2014, that was a very important moment. Now, this is actually some of the new data I cut from the summer that if you look at Facebook, and um, they are right now, like a majority of those are in, in, in mobile. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that Facebook isn't your top choice in the social media. For my generation, it is because it, you know, be, before 2010, everybody was on Facebook and obviously everyone was using the web browser to do this. 
So I kind of experienced that one. So Facebook at that time, they had a lot of discussions on this mobile. But the really good thing about Facebook is that they made the right decision to really go uh, fully on mobile and uh, to, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, choose that as a primary platform to make a lot of revolutions and changes. Okay. All right, guys, give me one, one minute. Okay. I'll, I'll be right back. It's just one sec. All right, sorry about that. And then, yeah, I, I just want to say that Facebook actually really made the right decision to, to follow the mobile. They put a lot of efforts. They redesigned their whole app. They recreated it with different technologies. And, and now they're, they're absolutely right. So everyone is using mobile uh, to do all the social media. So, but for, the, for some of the company who did not capture that trend, then you know, they obviously kind of a, a, a lot of a you know, negative influence. All right. Um, some other interesting data we were talking at that time, because they did, you're not going to talk about this one because it's already a truth, but this one just, I want to remind you when this happens, you know, in terms of revenue from the app stores is all, all ready, like way more than some other like entertainment, like movies, songs, all of those. So that's when the year that app store, um, revenues, even past the Hollywood movies, all of those. And then speaking of revenues. Um, <clears throat> we're often talking about this game. Does anyone still play this? Is this still popular? This, this game isn't popular anymore, right? Uh, I don't play it. <laughs> okay. But yeah, at that time was, uh, okay. Okay, got it, yeah. But uh, the reason I want to point out this one is that I know right now there, there are a lot of uh, games that makes way more money than this one, but, but the, this number today is still very huge. I think this is still one of the top games that makes in, in terms of generating revenues. So, you know, when I look at the number at that time, five years ago, I was really shocked that the, the game could generate like 1.6 million per day revenue. Okay. And then, um, you know, it's, it's almost unbelievable because for the game company, for a game like this, it's not going to be involving a lot of people. I think making this game probably like 50 people, you know, 100 people, that's it. And then, yeah, so, well, of course, the Tencent, that's a big company, you know, but compared with Tencent, this is just one game, one team. And they can generate this amount of revenue. That's just pretty, uh, you know, uh, amazing. And, you know, if you want to compare this, uh, think about, you know, if you want to have a business generate this much every day, you know, think about the scale, think about the, you know, uh, the amount of effort you need to put, right? So I actually did a very interesting comparison at the time. I, I told everyone, you know, Walmart was huge, right? It's all with big stores, a lot of people, a lot of employees, a lot of customer traffic, you know, if they need to make how much money they can make per day, you know, for this one, we did calculation at that time, you know, just estimated, you know, Walmart has this many uh, revenues per year globally, and then they have a 5,000 stores. And then if, if you put that every day, they can only make, uh, you know, $15,000, uh, sorry, $150,000 per day for that revenue, where the game is 10 times more. But I want you to think about, you know, maintaining the store like this, how hard it is, right? So you got a space, you got all of this, you know, logistical issues, you got so many employees, so many ships, so many things you need to manage. Where the game company, if everything goes well, people just sit there, just, just sleep, and they just want to make sure that service is, is up and running, that's it. And then, then that generates 10 times more revenue. I guess the profit even higher. And for this store, I don't know how much money they can even make for Walmart. You can find out their profit reach. It's not going to be very high, right? So, um, you know, they, that, that's, that's also, you know, the opportunities. At the same time, if we ask you guys to open a Walmart or grocery store, it's almost impossible, okay? You don't have that money to do it. 
But if we ask you to make a mobile app, you know, mobile game, you can really do it, and you probably can do it with your your own you know, by yourself. Okay, so so that's why there there are tons of opportunities um, related with mobile development. Also, if you look at um, you know uh, some of the accelerator program for startups. Okay, so the most famous one is the Y Combinator. Uh, more and more uh, startups are just focused on the apps, and there's so many successful examples coming up in the past ten years. Uh, not as many as before, but I definitely want to remind you of some of these crazy stories. Now I'm sure everyone is on Instagram, but I don't know if you guys even know uh, the Instagram app was acquired by Facebook back in 2011, I think. Uh, I don't know how many of you actually know it, but if back in 2015, 14, everyone knows that because that was a, like a very top news. Okay, so uh, this one, does, does anyone know how much they sold for Instagram? When, when, you, when Facebook bought Instagram, how, how much they pay? Yeah, you can Google find, I forgot whether it's 1 billion or 3 billion, it's probably $1 billion. Yeah, it's $1 billion. Yeah, so back in 2011, so the app, a single app was sold to Facebook by $1 billion and everybody was, was shocked. And you know, think about how many people you need to make an Instagram app. At that time, it's not as many features as today. It's mostly the image filter. Um, you know, you take an image that you make some nice images. That's what the Instagram was in the beginning. Now I think they do everything, everything right now. So that app at most, you know, probably 10, 20 people, that's it, okay? You make an app and then you sold $1 billion. The only reason it worth that money is that they got users. At that time, they got about 20 million users, active users. So that's why Facebook bought it. But you know, Facebook really good at this kind of decision. They really are, they were very sensitive about the uh, uh, mobile. Yeah, competition, you're right. Yeah, for social media, yeah, yeah, you're right. So it's all about users. So, but they are pretty good at this one. You know, all these deals, and it, was, it looks like a crazy, but, but now you look at Instagram, it's totally worth it, okay? So that was one like, very successful startup story. Same thing for WhatsApp, because this one, it goes even bigger. And then Facebook bought it for $19 billion uh, for a messaging app. Again, just because of the users. And it's also the same thing. I think the investment was definitely correct. And, and then it's very worth it. And because the WhatsApp is probably the most popular messaging app they did, and uh, was definitely the right decision. And um, yeah, so they did the homework, so they know what they're dealing with. All right. But you know, think about the same thing for the WhatsApp, how hard it is. And uh, you know, believe it or not, I can show you how you can make a messaging app, you know, probably within a couple hours, simple version. So it's not difficult at all. Okay. So um, you know, that's that's again some good opportunity you guys can also do. At that time, I would tell you that there were so many young people that were so inspired by this whole Instagram and WhatsApp um, uh, like uh, stories. When I was in Vanderbilt, we were working on the other app. I remember one guy like he suddenly reached out to us because we were in the university. This guy, I don't know what he does, but random guy that came to us and want to chat us some ideas. So what well, it was a little bit weird, but he he actually designed a uh, a camera, so you can put it on. Uh, I think it's just like a necklace. You can put it uh, on your neck here, and then there's a little small camera that keep recording everything. So he has the idea that, oh, you know, we you know we we the 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 project was that I record the video all the time and a eventually it will be back to my phone so that I have this live, you know, log for everything. Um, the, the project wasn't impressed at all, but I still remember the things he told me today. Oh, you know, the Instagram could be sold for $1 billion. Why can't we do it? And <laughs> so I was, yeah, I, mean, I was already in the startup where I know how hard it is. You know, it's a very good story, but, you know, just, just I just want to show you that they things really influenced a bunch of investor uh, developers at that time. People were crazy about app development. Everyone see the opportunities. It, it is definitely very attractive. Okay, it's not much, you know, that much trend today compared with that time. Um, 
you know, just uh, so you know that that this is uh, what happens, you know, when, while you were still very young. Uh, very interesting. But this is, I think there's still opportunities. I think some of the AI, obviously, for sure, or, or some other things, okay, always there are opportunities for software. The really nice thing about software is that as an individual, you can actually achieve a lot without a lot of, you know, money or investment. Okay. These are the later examples. You guys are know Uber went to IPO a couple of years ago. It, it wasn't very lucky for them because they hit the pandemic right after. So the, the stock price wasn't very good. And uh, Snapchat also went to IPO. This, this is also like a very crazy app. Uh, I never thought this app could be successful. I don't know when you guys started to use Snapchat. I, I never understand why you know, their, their initial feature that like you send something, the image that will be gone after what, one minute. And um, I never understand what, what, what is that thing. But uh, yeah, they, they went to IPO, it's very, very successful. Their stock didn't go very well uh, until the pandemic, right? So the right now I think their stock is very good. We had some students working in the STEM chat. So they got quite a lot of stock before the IPO. So I think they probably are the worst one or $2 million right now. Okay. All right. So that was a uh, you know, little story, just kind of a briefly chat. Hopefully that can help you to recall, remember some of the things you were young and you are growing with this trend. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys probably have a lot of different ideas, experience uh, than I do, um, which will allow you to probably do something better. Uh, because I have to admit that for me, it was a transition uh, because I was still in a lot of this traditional kind of thinking, even though I'm doing computer science, but I told you, I explained that I didn't really think about this mobile. I didn't have my smartphone until 2012, even though I, I even work, you know, in the tech company. Uh, you know, that, 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 that just showed me that, you know, a lot of people like myself, we, we had to go through that transition. But for you guys, you probably are more naturally, you know, familiar with this whole thing. I'm sure that you probably will have, have new ideas. So I definitely encourage you to always, you know, follow the trend, see the technology, you know, try to build things on your own and see what you can get, right? Always there are opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, the Snapchat, Instagram and the Snapchat, uh, the, the main issue was that, I don't know if you guys know, uh, Facebook tried to acquire Snapchat for many times, uh, but the guy didn't sell, sell it. So what's good because he actually eventually went to the IPO. So it's uh, very, very successful. Uh, that's why, you know, they're definitely, you know, big competitors. Yeah, so this is what I mentioned earlier. So this whole course was offered uh, very first time in the spring quarter. At that time, we were quarter system. We were using the three digits um, course number and it was a 499. Any of this new topic we propose will fall into this uh, 499. And then, you know, the last year, I think we got the formal title. Uh, it was supposed to be earlier, but because of the semester conversion, they, they stopped all this uh, course number, you know, uh, name or whatever you call it. So over the past years, every time I ask students to finish an app as your course project and the same thing for you guys. But uh, more than that, I require everyone to publish your app to officially to either Google Play or Apple Store. And that's still the, the same requirement for you guys. So over the past year, we have seen a lot of apps published, okay? Uh, this is the first set of apps we got in 2015. So I have to probably tell you that in, back in 2015, I had students to, every student, okay, publish about 30 apps in Google Play. Okay, some of those are still there and still got some very good downloads. And then that's a year later, I got a little bit more apps. Things we did in 2017, you can see a lot of apps got more professional. And uh, summer, we did a summer short session. And uh, yeah, this is the one I cut from last year. And uh, yeah, a lot more apps showing up. All right, so uh, yeah, I think because we had a large class at that time, that's why we got more, uh, more apps. So um, same thing for you guys, you will also do the same, okay? 
uh, don't don't be uh, uh, too too nervous. Uh, it's really not something that that's too hard to achieve. Uh, long, as long as you get something done, follow the instruction. You will also publish your own to the store. Okay. So uh, the but the difference is that between before this time before spring two thousand twenty, uh, we were mainly talking about Android development. Okay, so. That's why um, we, even though the course name was called Mobile Application Development, uh, the reason we did not market as Android is because that I feel that one day would probably would teach you iPhone or some other things. So that turned out to be a good decision. But first four or five years, we're mainly teaching Android. Um, there were reasons because Android used Java. Okay, in our department, Java is the primary language, so it's easier for you guys to transit. Um, Android is open source. A lot of things you can change. You can even modify the Android operating system. Uh, for example, we had a startup company that does the mobile security. We actually changed the Android OS so that you can have some special security policies and uh, features. So that's also very cool. And also publishing Android app is a lot easier than the OS. iOS is very hard to get into. They do very strict reviews. They, they give a lot of comments you can do fix, where Google is more op open because Google want to encourage more developers to, to, to build apps. They want to compete with Apple, okay? And also, if you want to do Android development, you don't need a Mac computer. So not everyone has a Mac, so that's why Android is better. Uh, if you want to build an iOS app, you must have an app, all right? So, um, and then also at that time, Android was also very uh, popular. They support different platforms. They got the wearable OS, they got the auto car, uh, you know, all of this happening. So we just saw that we want students to, to learn this. Uh, besides that, you know, we also seen a lot of other embedded software development also started using Android. So Android was quite popular. So that's how we spent a lot of the time, uh, you know, with uh, Android development. Uh, but, you know, as we do that one, uh, we also saw some of the challenges. The main challenge was, okay, so can I run my app, app in the iPhone? And and sorry, you can't because uh, iPhone, you have to do a different iOS development. There are different iOS system, different operating system. So then we start to think about, so how could we enable uh, our student also to run that, the, the app on, on, that, on their iPhone if they have the iPhone or Mac computer, right? So um, now obviously we don't have time to teach you both. I can teach you Android and then teach you another one for the Swift. Uh, that doesn't seem to be a feasible way. So uh, there are some solutions you can go with uh, a special framework or development stack that you can write the app once, and then you can generate the app uh, for both platforms. So in the early days, there's this thing called a phone gap that's actually pretty popular that allows you to do this. But you know the phone gap didn't work very well because they use they basically use a, a a website technology. So what happened that you actually uh, build a web app and then the HTML, and then you embed that into a mobile. So it looks like an app, but when you open it, it's actually just a website. So that's how they make it because the web browser is um, platform independent, okay? So, so that was the early solution. Uh, some companies try that, but most of the companies don't even do it because they know you're not gonna have very good experience with this kind of web fake mobile app, right? Yeah, for Kotlin, Kotlin was just a language that later on they adapt to use for Android, but it's still an Android development. The Kotlin can't handle iOS either. So it's the same thing, still the Android, right? And then later on, um, finally, you got some better solutions. Uh, so not sure how many of you heard about React Native. So Facebook as a very major, you know, mobile developer, now they don't own Android, they don't own iOS, so they want to make sure they 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 are still pretty you know active in this field. So they develop their own development framework called React Native. So their goal is to support both Android and iOS with one development only. So React Native was quite popular in the past you know six five years. Uh, some of you probably have used that one. This is different from React Native uh, JS. Sorry, uh, React. Uh, yeah, React.js. So React Native um, is for mobile. React.js is for web application. Okay, 
So uh, we could teach this one for this course, uh, but just because I personally not a big fan of React Native, I used this one back in 2017 or 18. It was a little bit difficult to, to, to write the JavaScript and then the ID wasn't you know, well supported. It, it's a bigger learning curve. So I kind of dropped that idea. Now, until two years ago, I started to see this thing called Flutter and that kind of changed my mind. So Flutter is the topic we're gonna to teach you now. We're not gonna do Android anymore, okay? So uh, the reason, let me explain that to you. Um, Flutter is created by Google, okay? It's not by Facebook. And hopefully you see the importance of this one. I'm not saying Google is, is better than Facebook. I didn't mean that, but there is a very important fact that Google owns Android. So that's why if Google are gonna create this framework that allows to get the app working for both Android and iOS, Google is more qualified because they control Android. They can make sure this Flutter works perfectly to be compatible with Android. Or maybe one day they will just totally replace Android. I'm not gonna be surprised for that because there's no need to maintain two different framework, okay? So for Google, the only thing they need to do is make sure this framework also work with iOS, which they've been trying to do all the time. Okay, so that's why I see Flutter has a bigger potential than React Native. Because React Native, they are done by Facebook and Facebook has zero control on this platform. If one day they wanna cut all the React Native app, they can do it. Okay, Facebook, there's nothing they can do about it. So that's why the Flutter is more, has more advantage and also for Flutter, they um, support not only Android and iOS, but also they are starting to support web and also desktop application, all right? So this one is huge, guys. When they start announcing this in 1.0, um, I saw the news, I don't think it's, it's really that big, but Flutter announced 2.0 earlier this year and I personally, I have to tell you, I already started to build a web application with Flutter. It's so much better than some other frameworks. I really like Flutter. So right now I have to tell you, Flutter supporting web is really mature. So I will tell you that's a huge thing because in many days, many times the developer will face this kind of a decision. Okay, we got this app. Should we go with mobile or should we go with web? Because if you go with a mobile, it sounds like a very nice experience, but you need to cover both platforms. You need to have people to download the app. A lot of users don't want to download the app. If you go with a web, you don't need to worry about the downloading. You need to just send a URL, it works. Okay, there's always this kind of discussion, which one to go or which one to go first. Now you don't have to face this problem. You basically build them all together with one language only. You only read the one, you literally support all the platform. Now I'm very confident on those. I will show you some of the apps I've been building recently uh, in the future that how well you can do to support mobile with Flutter. So now keep in mind, this Flutter is not only just about Android and iOS, but also for desktop, for web application. It's really combining everything. So this thing is gonna be really popular, guys, I have to tell you. I don't know how big it will go. It's not gonna to be too significant because you know, it's just a UI framework, but uh, you will definitely start to see this one growing a lot more faster than the others uh, because that advantage they brought is, is, to, is, is, a, is a, um, pretty essential. And also um, because Google, they use, I think I really like their IDE support. They do um, uh, Android Studio. You can, that's a primary platform. You can also use VS Code. So, the ID is really good. And you know, Google, they're pretty good at the development stuff. So their tools and everything is always easy to use. All right. Flutter, um, I can't remember. I know it, I personally know it probably around end of 2019 or early 2020. Um, no, sorry, I take it back, 2019, yes. They probably came around that time or maybe a little bit earlier than that, yeah. I was definitely one of the early adapters for this one, um, just because I, I, I'm always around the mobile development and I'm, uh, I know there's a huge need on this one, yeah. Uh, so the good thing about Flutter, uh, Flutter is the name of the framework, but the programming language they use is something called a Dart. 
Okay, and then don't worry that, oh, gosh, I need to learn another new language. Um, but um, no. So <laughs> once you see Dart, you actually find Dart is pretty much 90% the same as Java. Uh, that's another thing I really like. I'm a big fan of Java. Okay, and good things our department also use a lot of Java. So I'm hopefully you guys are your Java is pretty solid. Okay, these days I program a lot of Python too, um, but I still like Java. I think uh, it has a lot of cool, cool stuff and very like safe and, and reliable to use. Uh, Dart pretty much is a simplified version of Java. Um, a lot of the concept the same interface, extends, uh, override, all of this. So you won't find a very big learning curve to adapt this new language at all. Okay. So you will only find it's easier to use. Okay. So that's uh, language they use. And this is another thing I mentioned that you use Android Studio. Android Studio is really good. I personally like it. And also Windows works, uh, Mac works. Uh, you don't need a Mac computer uh, unless you need to run and build the iOS app, but you can just do with the development to use Android first if you're using a Windows. Okay. And um, yeah, so that's kind of a why we're switching to Flutter. I'm very confident guys, I will tell you that back in 2015, there wasn't many schools in the country that has a mobile development course. Okay, I think I was the early adapters. And this year, I, I, you can search, I don't think there are many schools teaching you Flutter. I think Android is a little bit outdated. I got a little bit bored with that. So you, because, because there is obviously the benefit that if you do Flutter, you automatically have exactly the same experience in the iPhone. Okay, you are, and also it actually guarantees the same UI. That's very nice because in the past, when big companies develop both platforms, they have two teams and they need to always make sure the design is the same, the implement is the same so that the app will look similar. Now with Flutter, it's pretty much guaranteed. Okay, it saves so much effort. Okay, not to mention the web support, that's even bigger, okay. So that's why I got very passionate and I decided to switch this one last year. And I did this one for a couple of years. And now I'm uh, sorry, a couple of times for the class. I'm very comfortable with Flutter right now. I think it's a great language. It has also compared with Android, it's a lot easier in many cases once you understand the structure. Okay, so. So Charles, you had a question for underscore on speed. Yeah, what? I was on that code page and you're comparing the languages. I was just curious if there was like a syntax uh, um, design or something yes. there. Yes, so <laughs> that's a very, very interesting thing. Underscore in Dart means private. Yeah, so if you don't mark, it's public. If you want to private, they don't have the keyword for private. So the underscore represent private. All right, yeah. cool, thanks. Yeah, that's one cool thing they do. Uh, the, another cool thing they do is that when you create an object like a bicycle in Java, you need to do new bicycle parentheses and then they don't need to do new. They just call bicycle parentheses. So that's why it, Dart is really a simplified version of Java. So you will find it uh, very cool to, uh, to learn. All right, but anyway, guys, Take, take a look at the photo, okay? I, I, I hope everyone, you guys spent some time with this one, learn it, uh, and, and it just gave you a lot of good opportunity to develop something more efficiently uh, with your own efforts, okay? So that's kind of the background. This is things I mentioned for mobile development, I think it's a lot of fun because it has a UI. You can use it right away. You can test it very quickly. So it's a very interesting thing to, to, to build compared with other type of software. Uh, my suggestion for you is that um, mobile development is a very practical subject. Not much series involved, not much algorithm involved. All you need to do is write a code. Write code, learn from sample, Google search, and try it, debug, and write more code. That's it. Um, to be honest, having me or not doesn't matter. It's just about you guys actually how much code you can write and, and try it on your own. All right. So any questions? Yes, so publishing app for Android, uh, it takes $25 to get an account, but it's lifetime, you, it's one-time fee, 25. So 
uh, you can you can um, uh, just get your own, and then I will also provide our own group account. For LOS, it's more expensive. It's a hundred dollars per year to maintain the LOS developer account. But I also have a, a account you can you guys can use. So for this one, we don't do group project, guys. Um, it will be individual project, just because you don't need a group effort for this one, and and. Um, you will just push yourself to learn every all the details so that we cut all this unnecessary communications. This is different from the uh, software engineering because software engineering, we do want you to experience that kind of organization, coordination, collaboration. Uh, but for mobile, you just need to master the, the skill set. All right, so let me go through the syllabus, guys. Okay, and, and I mentioned this morning, I'm still trying to figure out the canvas. So, so it looks like you guys all got the announcement and everything. Let me just go through this very, uh, some of the important things very quick. The most important thing I want to say is that the class, uh, uh, yeah, the class session mode, okay. So last year, I'm uh, starting to do, um, so last year when I first offered the flutter, I was doing all synchronized. And then in the summer, I tried a fully asynchronized. I think it both works. Um, I would say that asynchronized for this one might work a little bit better. Uh, the reason is that uh, for, for most of the session, I'm gonna show you how you're building step by step. I will do all the live coding, that's all I do. Uh, I'd like you to see how you can do things from scratch. I also want you to see that a lot of things, if you do that, you know, um, with um, only 30, 40 minutes, you can build a lot of things, okay? Uh, so um, that's what I do. But I, I find that if I do live coding, you get to pretty much just watching, that's it. Um, and, and you can't follow, you can't, I can't wait on you. So. That's why I, I decided that I'm gonna turn a lot of those sessions into asynchronized. It turned out it works really well. I did that last summer and then this summer. So every student actually delivered a pretty good job on the, on the apps. So same thing for here. Most of the technical sessions, I'm gonna put that to asynchronized with the videos. It's already there in the video, YouTube. I, some of the video I, need to, I do need to update, but I do want to still organize multiple sessions in the middle, primarily to check in your progress to answer your questions as well as the final demos. Okay, so for this course, it's gonna be very special. Uh, you will find the majority of the sessions to be the video based, but I will still wanna meet you guys uh, periodically to check in the progress and um, answer questions, all of those. Mostly checking the progress. I wanna make sure that you guys are building the app through the whole semester rather than rushing that at the very last weekend. Okay, because that's how we're gonna do that. But for the short term, just watch my email. In the coming weeks, we're gonna meet more often. Later on in the middle, we'll probably let you guys to go with your pace, but watch the emails. If I don't see anything, we're gonna meet on the same time in the class day with the Zoom. All right. And others, uh, prerequisite, nothing much important. No textbook, everything is online. And coursework, you do need to finish your project. Okay, uh, that's the most important. The project, not only you finish it, but also you need to publish it. That's required, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll, the reason is very simple because I want to make sure that this project helps your resume, helps your job application, okay? Because when you put something like a coursework, uh, people don't take it seriously. Everyone know what the coursework is. But if you see that this is my set startup project, I have published it in Google Play. Over the past two months, I got 500 downloads. Here are the URL, go check it. That's when people will take it seriously, okay? You can even put that on your phone, show it to people in the interview. Okay, so we have so many successful stories that, that students benefit from this kind of records. But if you don't publish, I would say the impact will be very limited, okay? So we'll talk more about the project next time. And then the assignment, is our same as the 480, sorry, 4800 project. It's mostly milestone check-ins to make sure you guys are doing the things you're supposed to do at that point. Okay, we'll have assignment one for today. So I'll talk more about that. Um, assignment project, that's the main thing. 
And uh, your final thing to do is the demo, okay? Live demo for the project. So the, we'll talk more about the requirement in the future. And here I kind of list all the things you need to know for this course. Majority of those, I have the videos already. Here, the video link, you should be able to find it. Just don't ask me where to, how much you should go. You should go as fast as you can. If you can finish the video with one to two weeks, you should start working on a project. That's all you need to do. At the end, get a nice project, then publish it. Then it's for your own records to, to, to help your, your own career. Okay. So any questions about the course? Oh, thanks, Christopher. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you, you will like it. The, the most exciting part is you got your own app then and the publish and running on a phone. Uh, so yeah, Andrew had a question about the app. So Andrew, the question is very common. So what is your requirements on the complexity of app? So I will give you more comments next week when I talk about ideas. But the short answer is the complexity is not the goal. I can't, I'm, I'm not going to ask you guys, you need to deliver 10,000 lines of code. Or I can't, I won't ask you, 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 your app should have 10 different screens. That's meaningless. Okay. Your app just need to be useful, need to be meaningful. That's the requirement. So that's why I'm never going to be picky on how, how complicated your app is. But I will be very picky why you're making it. Uh, what, what is the purpose, which I will share more next week. Very important. On Tuesday, I'll talk more about the project idea. Uh, don't miss it. I'll talk that for both 4800 project and this project. Same idea. I will probably duplicate some of the things, but it's the same idea. Uh, you, so Adrian, you will, you will have more ideas after that. Okay, but don't worry about functionality, whether you finish or not. Uh, but whether, whether you finish all the features you plan, you need to publish it. That's required. Okay, you can always do more publish later and updates, but you need to publish one version at least. Yes, so normally, um, uh, so Yanhe, so uh, we, in the first couple of weeks, we'll meet more often. Later on, we'll actually get to your own pace. Okay, once you get, you guys get to the, to the development. All right. All right, so assignment one, I put it here. Okay, you guys can take a look. Um, it's about setting up the environment. Okay, I'm not gonna demo it here in my machine. I'm gonna just show you what it should look like. Now you need to make sure, okay, you, you get Flutter SDK, configure, download the file. Again, documentation are here and here. I have a video I record in the summer that should tell you exactly the same, same steps, okay? Um, uh, from scratch, I got an empty computer to show you how you do that one. So this one is very helpful. So get SDK ready, IDE ready, emulator ready, create your first app and then run it in the emulator. Okay, so let me show you what it should look like. All right, so you should have your IDE, eventually everything configured. I'm gonna open my Android Studio, start from scratch. Once you open it, you will have this create a new Flutter project. I'm going to create a new Flutter project, show the Flutter application, create a next. I'm going to create my demo app. All right, and then choose SDK pass. That's why you need to finish our step one. And your location, and next. Choose the default packet name, finish. At this point, it's gonna create a sample template app. So you don't have to write your any code. They will give you this code by default. All right, so that's what you need to do first, but this is not over. You need to be able to run it. When you run a mobile app, you need a phone to run it. But for the development phase, you just need to have an emulator. So in Android Studio, you need to set up and configure your emulator devices just like this and then you go to one of them. I'm going to start my emulator. And very quickly, the emulator will show up. All right. 
as you can see, this is the virtual phone. It's an Android device. Okay, just like a real phone. So I'm gonna normally put it here on the side and then you leave your Android Studio open so that you can see the same thing together. And then let's run this app. If you everything is configured correctly, once your emulator runs up, you will see the emulator right here. So this is the Google phone. You click on a button to start run. You don't need to touch anything about the code. Just run the app uh, in another one minute or so, you will see your app start running up here. That's what you need to do for the very first assignment. Uh, but I will give you some warning that, uh, you know, this isn't that easy. Uh, Flutter environment setup probably is the most complicated software development environment setup you ever can have. Okay, uh, very likely it's gonna be the most challenging one uh, because there's so many things to install. Um, but it's there's nothing difficult, okay? Most of the problem, if you see, you can probably Google and find it online. But this is the thing you need to start really early. A lot of the downloads, a lot of configurations, a lot of the tests, uh, you need to have emulator ready and run it, you know, make sure you're not hitting any errors. First time you run the app, it's gonna take a while like this. Okay, I have a pretty good computer. It's taking me about half to one minute. If your computer is a little bit slow, it's gonna take longer. Everything works works well, then you will see the app automatically pop up on the on the emulator. And then this is the sample app. Very simple, one screen, one button here. You click on a button, it's gonna increase the number. That's how the sample app works. So if you can get to this point, get everyone uh, look at this carefully, okay? This is your very first milestone. The earlier you can get here, the faster you can start to learn everything from the video and making a project. Okay, don't wait on this one. I give you one week for the due date uh, for this assignment. When you submit, this time I'm gonna check this progress really carefully because last year I was a little bit too easy, okay, with all the assignments. You guys didn't, no, sorry, not you guys. Some of us didn't do it until last minute. So uh, what I wanted to do, submit very easy, submit a screenshot, guys, okay? Get a screenshot of your screen. So that I see, oh, actually you have this one. At least it looks like you have this one, this one ready. Okay, submit that screenshot to the canvas so that marks you'll finish your milestone number one. Okay, so any questions about this step? All the details you will find in the, in the tutorial and the video I recorded, the very first one. Okay, and um, but you guys need to start that as soon as you can. You can use the VS Code, doesn't matter. I'm a big fan of the Android Studio. It takes more resources, but I, I think, um, yeah, I, I'm just getting used to it. So, but VS Code works the same. Uh, Danny's question, publish through Google Flutter? No, you, when you publish app, you only publish Google Play or Apple Store, okay? A Flutter doesn't deal with the publishing. So web deployment, Charles, um, I, I've been testing that recently. So, you know, the really cool thing about this one, um, I'm not sure I'm 100% right. It looks like the web application they generate are all JavaScript based, which means that you can, you can deploy that um, to a static hosting. So you don't need a backend. For example, I'm not sure you're familiar with GitHub pages. You can, you can just put those apps to the GitHub pages. It will be running automatically. So you don't need to get a, like a web server or something to host those. So it's very convenient. All right. Okay, guys, so here's the plan, okay, for the next week. Tuesday, I'm gonna talk about project idea. And Thursday, I'm gonna check in your progress on, on the setup, okay? And the Thursday, I probably will give you more guideline on, on where you want to start the videos, which video first, all of those. Um, but make sure you finish the assignment, okay? You should be able to see the assignment in the canvas. Okay. All right, guys, that's all I have. To be honest, I'm really, really hungry right now. I didn't have anything today. All right. So, oh, office hour, guys. I'm, I'm generally, the best time to chat is after class at this time. I generally will be available. If you want to chat, I'm also available at noon time before this class, be between the previous class and this one. 
okay so um let me know or other time just email me i can also you know uh, meet at different points my previous class ended at 11 15 so yeah if you can jump in around 11 15 i actually put the zoom zoom number there guys uh, if you see uh my syllabus here this room is a previous class ID. So if you jump in around 11, 10, 11, 15, I should be there. Okay, that's another easy, easy way to communicate. I can't guarantee I'll be always online like 12, 12, 30. But if you let me know, I, I will be there. Okay. All right. Once again, uh, nice to have all of you guys here. I'm sure you guys will all deliver something really nice. But you know, again, think about some of the story I shared. Uh, there, is, there are really opportunities that you can do with mobile application that um, uh, just on your own, okay? All right, so if you don't have a question, I will see you guys next week.